Hey everybody, welcome to the D3 Media Podcast. I'm your host, Danny Benson, and I'm joined by Brandon. Hello, everybody. And uh, we're going to be going over a bunch of news that came out this week, mainly video game stuff, some stuff in the comic book world, and a bunch of new collectibles that are getting released. Uh, so all things nerdy. Uh, so I think we'll start out by talking about uh, the passing of the uh, great Denny O'Neill, which is really unfortunate, but uh, you know he was such a legend in the comic book community. Yeah, and it kind of happened abruptly, right? He died of natural causes. Yeah, he was uh, 81. Yeah, it's pretty crazy because uh, I've read, or actually, let me say, let me ask, what have you read from Dennis O'Neill? Mostly his his 1970s Batman run with Neil Adams. I think that was his Mm. him at his best. And for anybody who doesn't, real quick, for anybody who doesn't know who Denny O'Neill is. he is really the one. I know everybody gives Frank Miller this this credit when really it was Denny O'Neill. He uh, was editor on was he writer too? Editor and writer for well, actually he started at Marvel. Yeah, and uh, I think he was a editor. Yes, he was. Yeah, um, I have his book, uh, the Danny O'Neill Guide to Writing DC Superheroes, mm-hmm. and I can be i might be wrong but there's a forward in there either by stan lee or a quote by stan lee saying that danny o'neill was an incredible individual and marvel losing danny o'neill was their loss and dc's gain right if i'm paraphrasing correctly yeah i'm pretty sure that's what he said and uh so i'm pretty sure he ran all i know really is that just is that he ran the uh he pretty much ran batman and uh green green lantern it was the Green Lantern, Green Arrow, yeah. like uh, duo book. So uh, it was yeah. him and Neil Adams mainly working on everything, and like they were, they, were they responsible for the? I know Neil Adams was, but was Danny O'Neill responsible for the creation of uh, John Stewart as Green Lantern? I believe so. I know for a fact he helped create a uh, Rachel Ghoul with uh, right. Neil Adams. Uh, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he. Did because they started implementing a little bit more diversity into their books at the time. Right. Uh, they're at least going for not to say anyone didn't do it beforehand, but uh, they were trying new things with those characters, and they're including like new characters and characters from different backgrounds. Yeah, DC and, uh, really was was behind on that compared to Marvel. Yeah, so it was because I think Danny O'Neill kind of took what he learned from Marvel to kind of implement some of those new ideas and fresh takes on existing characters and new characters at DC. Right. And so Denny O'Neill pretty much brought Batman back from that campy 1960s feel of the Adam West show and all that back to the more, the more like Gothic kind of Batman that we know today. And that, that artwork like that Neil Adams did in that on that seventies run. I love that look of that, like haunted house kind of, uh, it looks like almost an old universal monster movie, those, those books. And it just looks so good. Oh yeah. I mean, I've always stood by that. Neil Adams, Batman design is probably my favorite one. That is to me, that is the definitive Batman design. If they made like a, a Mezco figure based off of that, I'd pick that up in a heartbeat. Oh, easily dude. The, everything about it, the blue tights, (laughs) like blues work. And don't get me wrong. The bat look today is awesome. Still, you know, it's just, you know, characters have redesigns that work and some that don't and some that just really stick and some that are in a way timeless. And the I know we're talking about Danny O'Neill, but Neil Adams is just as important to that team. And his design really helped flesh out those stories. Right. Yeah. And, and well, I was also going to say, uh, sorry to cut you off, um, but, you know, people talk about like famous duos in comics like Stan Lee and Jack Kirby or, you know, Jack, uh, Stanley and Steve Ditko, or any, you know, a lot of people bring up Stanley and X, Y artists. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, Danny O'Neill and Neil Adams were that duo that just like, they really changed things. And people talk about, you know, people, uh, writers like Frank Miller is changing the game and all that, but they were kind of the ones that kicked the door open and started leading the way for that new wave of artists and writers to come in after them. Right, and many people don't know this either, is that the Joker was, no pun intended, a joke 
among DC before Danny O'Neill came back because he hadn't been in comics in years before Danny O'Neill brought him back with that inc- that iconic uh, cover that that Neil Adams drew of the Joker coming back to town and like they literally made him a killer because the Joker hadn't I, I don't think he even killed anybody before. Really uh, before Danny he, yeah, he used to claim that he would like. Uh... This is such an obscure example, but I remember reading Batman issue one because I was like, oh, I'm going to read Batman issue one. Yeah. <laughs> and he does that thing where he's like, at midnight, someone dies or something, but I don't know if they actually showed it. Yeah, they never, it was never an on screen type thing. Yeah, it was more of like a threat esque, you know, campy threat. Yeah, but he really, he reinvented Batman and he reinvented the Joker for the way we know them now. And for that, I think that is a huge contribution to to the Batman history and everything. And he was just, a, he was a great, uh, uh, really great uh, creator. And I, we're still going to, we just wanted to touch on today. That I still want to do a little tribute or something, maybe next week on this channel or, at, or over at Apollo city, whatever we, we choose to do later this week, something more dedicated to him. Oh, definitely. I mean, he's important to comics. Like he really, at, le- at the very least DC comics for a reason, right. you know, we, we can go into depth for it late on. We can go in depth another time. But to just give an idea, I mean, he's the one that really brought stories of like abuse and drug use on top of that uh, discrimination. You know, he brought a lot of that to to the forefront. And that was kind of what the stories are about, especially his like uh, Green Lantern, Green Arrow, like road trip uh, across America kind of story. I forget what it's called. Right. And the, the idea of like making, I think like, uh green arrow is the is more liberal in views and then hal jordan's conservative and you have them working back and forth mm-hmm. off of each other that is such a i just can't see comic creators tackling something like that now in comics and i think that that story works so well when oh, yeah. when they wrote that ahead of its time as well you know and- oh yeah I mean, well, not not just ahead of its time. It was relevant for the time, and at the same time, it still speaks on issues that are going on today. It's timeless. Yeah, it it brings to light things that people are talking about still. You know, I'm like, yeah, and yeah, it's just he was an all around good guy and great writer. I mean, his stuff still holds up. Oh yeah, you know, it's so like, good. It, not to shame any writers from back then, of course, but you know, there's a certain style from like each generation of comics in the bronze, silver, and gold age, or yeah, you know, or I guess I should say the gold, silver, and bronze age, you know, like people talked a certain way, stories are written a certain way. And it's a little hard to go back to those stories because of that, because it was for a certain generation. And Danny O'Neill stuff like holds up. Like if you read Batman Venom, it's still awesome. It's still oh, it's, a great, great that's such a good story. Yeah, it's short too, but it still holds up. And it's one of the more pinnacle ones people don't talk about because it's the prequel to Nightfall. Yeah, and it's I like that it's an early Batman just experimenting with like his... He's so angry that he can't save everybody. So it's a really... It's just a good story. Anybody... Batman Venom is a story I think any Batman fan should check out if you haven't already. Oh, easily. And, you know, it's not a huge commitment, so it's easy to pick up. Yeah. Yeah, so... I just, uh, you know, man, it's weird. You know, we're getting to that point where a lot of those legendary people are getting there. Yeah, and uh, you know? we, we lost a lot of a lot of older comic creators. We lost, you know, either during the this pandemic, either due to the pandemic or 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 what have you. So, um, yeah, it's just it's sad, and and nobody really is talking about it. You know, everybody everybody just focused on like the superstars like Stan Lee, but outside of that, I feel like a lot of them are just kind of forgotten and it's, it's sad. Oh yeah. I mean, Steve Ditko died the same year as Stan Lee. Yeah, he did. Yeah. And the only time I saw a sort of like sign of respect from the comic book community. And I say it like that because, you know, the people in the comic book community are the only ones that are going to know about these people, right? Right. And to to yeah. the media's credit, they did report that Steve Ditko passed away. Yeah. Some of the but, major uh, ones. But it was it was kind of just like a, it happened and that's it. Yeah. And the only time I saw a sign of like, you know, rest in peace or something like that was after, I believe, the Spider-Verse film. Yeah. I think that's the only time I saw it was Into the Spider-Verse where it said, you know, in memory of like Stan Lee and Steve Ditko, because, you know, they were the team for that book. Yeah, they created Spider-Man. Yeah. And 
no matter what you say, like in terms of like how much recognition Stanley takes or, you know, like either way they worked on it together and, you know, I just think from the comic book community, people, you know, people tend to have like these short term memories and kind of don't remember a lot of people for yeah. the stories they love, you know? Oh yeah. So that's just kind of how it is though, unfortunately, but yeah, it's like that. I think in every creative medium, everybody forgets uh, some of the greats. Yeah, exactly. If they're not in the spotlight of like Hollywood, then, you know, yeah, that's just how it is, unfortunately. But I will say rest in peace, Danny O'Neill. Oh yeah. We're going to miss you, Danny. A pinnacle, uh, a pinnacle contribution to the DC lore. And on top of that, just the comics in general, and just a good example of being, at least to my knowledge, he was never, he never came off as like a terrible person or ever did anything terrible, at least from what I know. Oh yeah. He seemed, um, seemed like he was just a real upstanding guy. Yeah. He was a teacher and he was a great inspirational writer that many people looked up to, including myself. Cause I, I definitely love some Danny O'Neill books and you know, his work will be timeless and remembered. Yeah. And let's not forget he is immortalized even more by being a street name in Gotham. Oh yeah. They, don't they have Denny O'Neill Avenue or something? Something or? like that. It's at least O'Neill Avenue or O'Neill street. I remember seeing it in Tom King's run. So, you know, there you go, Danny. There you go. He is forever ingrained in the Batman lore one way or another. Oh yeah. Yeah. So rest in peace, Danny. And to everyone before you. Oh yes. And then, uh, to keep going with comics, there was uh, rumors that AT and T, because they took over Warner Brothers, who owns DC, I believe that's how it works. They're trying to get rid of WB Interactive. Yeah, so it looks like that was speculated. It was never confirmed, but basically, it looks like they're just trying to sell off WB Games or Interactive. Yeah, to the highest bidder. Hmm. And. It could be wrong. Uh, I mean, it could be, you know, just a rumor at that. But I, I found out about it because people were like, Microsoft should buy them. <laughs> yeah. And I thought that was kind of strange because, you know, Sony owns the rights to Spider-Man in certain outlets. And, you know, anything related to Spider-Man. But if the rumors are true and if Xbox, if Microsoft were to buy the rights, to WB interactive, then it would be like this weird, you know, kind of like reverse effect of like Microsoft having the rights to the game distribution of DC characters. Yeah. It would be the DC characters and they also had, there's mortal Kombat. Yeah. Mortal Kombat, And, and there's another one too. I just, I just forgot. I know WB Montreal, of course, is under them. They're the ones that made Batman Arkham Origins. Mm -hmm. And they're supposed uh, I don't to know be developing a new, a new uh, Arkham game. Or some sort of JSA game, apparently. Or there Superman was a game. bunch of rumors. There was a Superman game. I did a video about that a couple months back. There was a Superman game that was supposed to be coming out, and it's uh, that looks like it got canceled. But it, there was some concept art that got leaked, and it looked really good. Oh Well, who knows? Maybe one day. But uh, someday they, um, you know, I think Rocksteady, maybe, I don't know if they're owned by WB, uh, WB. They're a part of it. Cause I, I read somewhere in the, I think it was in the link that you sent me that, uh, uh, WB would have to, if they sold WB Rocksteady would go with them to wherever. Uh, yeah. So they're not owned, but that's just, they kind of just work with them exclusively. It sounds like there is some, under some sort of umbrella thing going on with them. Mm. Okay. I'm looking it up. So definitely nether realm games, which is Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Uh, actually rocksteady seems to be a studio under WB games. Okay. I didn't know that. Uh, travelers tales. I believe the people behind all the, uh, interactive games, such as yeah. like the walking dead and all that. Traveler's Tales, I think they did. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Sorry. The Traveler's Tales is the Lego games. Yeah, they, 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 I was just about to say, they do like all the Lego Star Wars and all that games. Yeah, even though uh, it's Marvel characters, they published Lego, like Marvel superheroes and all that. But oh, it's under okay. WB Games. Wow, that's... Huh. So it's a little of a cluster. That uh, is. So does that mean that all that would become an Xbox exclusive if Microsoft bought them? Well, here's my thing, you know. 
I've always said that I am a appreciative person of all gaming consoles and communities. You know, I play PlayStation Switch mm-hmm. or PlayStation, Nintendo, Xbox, and PC. You know, I'm not, I don't align myself with any sort of like console or anything like that. But I am a little particular to Microsoft. I was a big fan of the original Xbox and Mm -hmm. that kind of like made me fanboy for the Xbox and 360 when I was growing up. Um, But I, I, the Xbox one is a great console in my opinion. And I use all my multi-platform games for that and all the exclusives on the others. You know, if it's not PC, it's going to be on Xbox basically if it's a multi-platform, multi-platform game. Right. Uh, what I like, though, is that Microsoft isn't trying to make exclusives that big of a deal. They never have. No. And, yes, the Xbox could use some, uh, you know, exclusives to really make, like, a like a killer. I guess, like, a PlayStation killer. But they're going more of the accessibility route. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know what's been speculated is that they want the Xbox to be a platform and not necessarily a console. That's yeah. why, you know, they have the play anywhere where if you buy a game digitally, you get it on PC and Xbox. That's and, something you know, I really do like. Yeah. And, you know, they put some games on Switch, like Cuphead mm-hmm. and like Ori and the Blind Forest. And so it's not necessarily about being exclusive. It's just like just be an Xbox Live member and pay for these services and you get access in different ways. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love the I'm a PlayStation guy, but I... I went over to the 360 for that generation. I I still think the 360 is a great console. I love that that thing. That's oh, why I still play it so much. Yeah, I mean, 360 is an awesome console. I play that thing religiously. And, you know, my favorite online game is Halo. So, yeah, it's a given that I'm going to love Xbox. But, you know, I was saying the whole, like, accessibility thing, because uh, when Xbox gets, like, exclusive studio rights of some sort of game or, like, they buy a studio they make it available pretty easily. You know, like yeah. this week, Last of Us 2 is coming out. Uh-huh. And, you know, I'm going to play it, of course. I took the day off to have my gamer holiday. Yeah. And realistically, the only way you could play Last of Us 2 is on your PS4. Hmm. So now, why, why is that? You know, it's an exclusive. Oh, it is? Last of Us, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. For some reason, I thought it was multi-platform. That shows how out of touch I am with the... I was so distracted by the plot leaks. Oh, <laughs> I, yeah. I didn't notice but, that. Oh, uh, yeah. It's Naughty Dog. The people oh, made that's Uncharted. right. Yeah, the same people who made Uncharted. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's one of those things that it's going to sell well. It's, a, it's an amazing... Probably going to be one of the best games of this generation easily. But you can only play it on your PS4. Yeah. Now look at Microsoft. What they're doing, they re- they released the Master Chief Collection on Xbox One exclusively, but then eventually it took a few years. But now the Master Chief Collection is on PC, and people yeah. lost it because you could play Halo Reach all the way to like Halo Four on PC. Yeah, I remember that the and original Halos were on PC too. They were. They were, they weren't. Uh, they were adapted from another studio. So they were just like, yeah, they were like ports. Yeah, they were ports. This time around, 343 uh, Studios is doing the PC port themselves. Okay. So, you know what? I, you see what I'm getting at there? It's just like, you know, yeah. I, and I'm a Game Pass member as well. I know I feel like I feel like I sound like an Xbox salesman at this point, but... <laughs> is Game you Pass know, Game Pass is part of it? It's kind of like that, that streaming thing that PlayStation has, right? It's different. So you have Xbox Live Ultimate, which is Game Pass with Xbox Live, but okay. on, on the console and PC. So uh-huh. essentially, it's like Netflix for games, but you don't stream. You actually have to download the games. But all first-party Xbox games are there day one and permanently. That's so, you cool. get ac- so you get access to Gears of War and you know Halo, of course, and whatever else they have that's first-party, like Crackdown for instance. But, you know, it's kind of nice knowing that I pay my membership and I can play Gears of War 5 on PC and still play with my friends on Xbox. And my saves are synced between the cloud. So if I want to pick up on my Xbox, then I can just do that later and I'll still have my data there. So can you imagine if Microsoft were to buy WB Games and 
you could just play Arkham on PC or Xbox Xbox seamlessly because you bought one copy and you could just play between the two. Well, I do plan on bu- on building a gaming PC sometime in the near future, so I guess I'm going to have to now if they if they become uh, exclusives of that. I know the PlayStation that has their like streaming thing, but you have to like you don't need a PlayStation console. I think you could do it on the PC. You could stream the games, but it takes a ton of your internet bandwidth. Yeah, your bandwidth is going to suffer. It's kind of like you need good internet for it to be stable. On top right, of and then you're going to, yeah. otherwise you're just going to have frame rate drops all the time. And it's Yeah, just, well, it's, Xbox is in the streaming game as well. They're trying to tap into that. Yeah. I'm actually part of the uh, Xbox, like, uh, what's it called? xCloud early, sir, early access thing. Uh-huh. And I played Tekken on my phone. Okay. And it worked. It, it was I was on my Wi-Fi. I didn't try like through like my you know my data or anything, but it it was like pretty solid for being like a beta access thing. So you know who knows. But then yeah. again, you know Microsoft has a lot of stuff going for them in the background in terms of hardware and you know software compared to like Sony. Not to like yeah. say Sony doesn't. It's just Microsoft is an overall bigger company. Yeah, that's where they, Xbox always has had the like the the advantage over everybody else is that they're backed by Microsoft. Yeah, and you know Microsoft is literally one of the biggest companies in the world. So yeah, of course their in- infrastructure is gonna be you know pretty good. It was so sad because the other day I was trying to use uh, Xbox 360 Smart Glass, mm-hmm. so like I could play like the I could play the game out like streaming it on my PC because like my my laptop when I got it uh, in December had a. Xbox 360 smart glass on there for some, I thought that they discontinued it and I was like, Oh, okay, I'm going to try using this because I never used it when, when it was out. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately now it doesn't work. I was like, so why did you include it on the windows 10 pack then? <laughs> I was like, that'd be so cool. Cause like you could play it. Your Xbox can be like downstairs in the other room, but you could stream it on your PC and play it. So well, you can still do that. You can for the, yeah. Oh man. You got, you got a lot of catching up to do for the yeah, 360. Oh, not 360. Okay, you can, yeah. it, you can do it for your PlayStation 4 and your Xbox One. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I, so, I stream on the same network. Yeah, I have the all the Xbox stuff. It came with my PC for that, but or for the Xbox One. But unfortunately, it, like, it came with the stuff for the 360 too. Just none of it works anymore. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, you got to stay up to date, and that's the only way to really utilize these services. That's why I left gaming for a long time because I was just so I got it's expensive to keep up with it. And I got so many other yes. expensive hobbies. So, but I, I want to get back into it because I have a copy of red dead redemption too. And that was a game that I was waiting for since the first game came out. And <laughs> I just, I still haven't gotten to play it yet. So, cause I was oh, just, man. I'm waiting for the PS five pretty much. Well, well now that you bring it up, the PS five got revealed this week. Oh yeah. And a uh, plethora of games. Those, uh, that, all the games that have gotten announced this week, like that's a good start. Oh yeah, I mean the where Sony has always killed it, and kind of Nintendo in the same way is the exclusives. Yeah, that's kind of why I have them. Of that's that's why I said I had them because I play all the PlayStation exclusives and all the Nintendo exclusives, and everything else is on my Xbox. Right. So you know you have Horizon got announced uh the spider-man miles morales got announced those two look really good oh yeah that's gonna make it worth owning it alone uh the new ratchet and clank got announced which i'm pretty excited for oh yeah i forgot um Um, mafia mafia is gonna have a remake yeah people are pretty excited for that because mafia was pretty big when it came out yeah i played the demo for the first game i haven't played the whole thing though i never finished it because it's a big uh, game it is, and you know, it's at the time it was just like, oh, look at all these open world games, but GTA exists. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. that was the sad thing. It really got overshadowed by GTA. Everything got overshadowed by GTA. It did, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of which, GTA Five is going to be <laughs> on the PS Five. <laughs> did you see the dislikes on that video? Everybody's so like over Rockstar it's, shit. It still makes money. The the game yeah. pulls in more money than some new games. It's ridiculous. I know, and that's why everybody's everybody like I was looking on the comments on Reddit for uh that for all the new GTA stuff and everyone's just like stop playing GTA for like 6 months so that like to force them to like kick out another game. It's not their fault the game is that fun online. That's the problem. I, I never I haven't I still haven't even played GTA 5 yet. 
Oh, GTA 5 is good. I mean, it should tell you how old the game is. I played it on 360 back in 2013. Yeah, I remember when uh, when it first came out, my roommates got it. And, like, we played it then, but, like, I never actually sat down and played the whole story. It's a long game. It's a big commitment, yeah. of course. And then, you know, GTA Online is, like, its own game entirely. And that goes on forever at this point. Yeah. Did you so. hear that... Uh, that there's rumors that there's going to be one of the launch titles that's going to be here for the winter on PlayStation and Xbox and uh, yeah, just PlayStation and Xbox, maybe PC is that there's going to be a remake of Red Dead Redemption, the original one. People have been saying that since Red Dead two came out. I, I mean, know. it, I love Red Dead and I played Red Dead two for like, I played, I completed the first Red Dead. Like I know, I, I got 100% like twice on it. It's so fun. Yeah, and then Red Dead 2, I put 100 hours into it, and I'm like 85% done. And I just took a break because everything's so slow-paced in that game. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a fun game, though. I've it's a, it's some a great, of it. Yeah, it's a great game. It's better than GTA in many ways. The only thing I have personally that I don't know how to feel about that is uh, for me... I just have to pick and choose my battles in terms of games to play. Yeah. Because, you know, we're all getting older and we all have prior commitments that life, you know, makes a priority. Yeah. And a game like that, don't get me wrong, is fun and awesome, but I already played it and I'm trying to play a bunch of other stuff, you know? Right. (laughs) Like... I heard that they're trying to they're gonna try to like add stuff to make it more in continuity with Red Dead Redemption Two and I mean and I feel like, like that they and more more of the abilities and, and things. So it's like that could be fun. But I mean the first game is so good already. I I don't know if it necessarily needed that. Yeah, so I mean if it feels like forty bucks, I'd be tempted, you know, but I forget how they're so expensive now. Well, games are still sixty dollars, but yeah, they're there's it's still like I don't know. It's just I would want it to happen, but I don't think I'd play it because I've again I've already played it. I know that sounds kind of weird, but yeah, I feel yeah, yeah, and like like I said, I've got so many other games I got to play. I still have to play like two games that are one hundred fifty hours each, practically. Jeez. Yeah, I still got to play Persona 5 and Witcher 3. I haven't even touched those. Oh, wow. Yeah, and those are big commitments. And yeah, and everything coming out, including Resident Evil 8. Yeah, which, Resident Evil 8. Um, you know, in this past year, I've literally played almost every single Resident Evil. <laughs> <laughs> I, went, I wasn't a big fan for a long time. And like, I played 4 a lot. I loved 4. I played 5 and 6. So I basically played like the worst ones in a way. Yeah. And then I played the two and three remakes. And if you consider them as like a package, you know, two and three, they're really amazing games. Yeah. Two is phenomenal. Three is a little bit of letdown, but still fun to play through. Uh huh. And I told you, I'm playing seven right now and really digging it. And it's been a blast and it's actually really scary. So I'm pretty hyped for Resident Evil 8. I'm just not going to play it on my PlayStation. I'll play it on my uh, Xbox Series X, most likely. <laughs> So. Yeah, I uh, the new System Shock remake looks really good. I haven't gotten to play the the original System Shock. I used to watch my cousin play it on the on the PC when it first came out, but I never got to to play the game. So this is going to be a I'll definitely be picking that up because like, did you see the trailer for it? I heard about it, but I didn't see the trailer. It looks yeah. really good. I'll let me do a screen share here. Uh, I think I have a picture of it on here somewhere. Uh, Uh, yeah it's just like uh, i love okay. the i love the color scheme and everything that kind of neon w- in front of the the blue so lights and everything yeah it's like an upgraded version of the the engine that originally used for the game yeah so that's uh that's gonna be a fun one yeah it'll definitely be worth checking out i mean system shock 2 is like the predecessor to uh what's it called to bioshock and all yeah that. So, i i didn't know that 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 was uh the hmm? uh the like spiritual successor of Bioshock. Then there's a screenshot from the new Mafia game that looks really good. And Kenna, that that looks like a good game. It's like a Pixar game come to come to life or a Pixar movie. And then there goes Miles Morales, which is gonna be dope. Oh yeah, 
He's got a sick uh, haircut. Did you see the PS5 game about the cats? Oh, yeah, that it's supposed to be like a uh, – you, you play as a feral cat in like a cyberpunk city. Oh, dude, I'm so ready for that game. I was I like, I need too. that day one. That looks like, actually hella fun. And you get like a little backpack. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. And Star Wars Squadrons got announced or leaked. Right. I was just playing uh, Star Wars Rogue Squadron 3. Uh, on the. I was emulating that the other day. And, uh, yeah, like – I, I, we're really overdue for a good space combat game. Yeah, you know, I appreciate them, but you're going to hate me for this. I, I'm not a big fan of like those, I guess, space combat only games. Oh, okay, yeah. No, I, I'm you not know? either. Like, there's got to be some variety in it. Yeah, like, there's people that love it. You know, if you're into Ace Combat or Star Fox, you know, I've played those too, and they could be fun, but it, like you got to be really into them to play like a full campaign. Right. That's why I like the third, uh, the third uh, Rogue Squadron game because it actually has like a story that has variety with the missions. You get to play on foot and in space. And yeah, I need that. I can't. It's kind of like how I feel about racing games. I can't only race. You know. Yeah, like, I don't. I don't own any racing games. Maybe it's just me, probably. But like, I just finished playing Battlefront Two on PC, and the, it was uh, the a original fun little game, huh? The original one or the new one? The new one. Okay. And the campaign's all right, but you get some missions where you do like all the space fighting, and even then, I was like, all right, this is starting to get a little much for me. Right, and I I just hope that this game, from the way it looks, like I hope that like you could choose like what path you go down, like you could join the alliance, and there's actually like a long story where you get to play as just a soldier. I mean, I'll probably still check it out, and it sounds awesome. Yeah. Uh, I'll and, definitely check it out. It's Star Wars. I'll check it out. Yeah, and uh, I mean, EA seems to be doing something right. They fixed Battlefront. Fallen Order was incredible. Yeah, I still got to play that. Oh, dude, Respawn Studios killed with that game. They're the ones that made Titanfall, and so far, they're like nothing but good games across the board, and they got the green light to make more, uh, to make Fallen Order into a whole, like, series. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so I'm pretty excited. So, Maybe EA finally found a way to not make bad Star Wars games. <laughs> yeah, I heard who saved the the Battlefront Two was uh, Dice. Well, Dice developed it. They just had to do a complete revamp. Yeah, they're the ones who did all the revamp and everything for the game to try to make it playable and not a gambling thing. Yeah, gambling simulator with a Star Wars skin. Yeah, it's so ridiculous the way that they've done that. And what do you uh? What do you think of the new PS2, the new PS5 look? You talking about that inverted ice cream sandwich router? Yeah, I, everybody's I, going I that route. Yeah, I don't. Uh, like, how do you feel? For me personally, like I love the way the controller looks. I'll say that. Um, oh God, really? I hate the controller. <laughs> really? I have never been a fan of the PlayStation controller since I was a little kid. You son of a bitch. I'm this okay. son of a bitch. Okay, first of all, look how big my hands are. Now, okay, all right. those analog sticks when playing certain games is terrible. <laughs> okay, I will admit, I do like the, the placement of the... Uh, I like. I think the 360 controller is... I love that controller because like you actually... It feels more natural having the, the joystick up, uh, up above instead of like down below, like the way the yeah. PlayStation has it. I still love the dual... I still love the DualShock controller, though. Like, it's just... Yeah. I know I'm such a fanboy, and I, I have Donald Trump hands. I have small hands. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I have freakishly large hands. And back on the original Xbox days, that massive Duke controller—that thing was for me. Yeah. Um, okay. I don't have small hands. I have I have long, weird <laughs> hands. But uh, uh, anyway, back to. <laughs> do you ever watch Always Sunny? Yeah. The lawyer, uh, Charlie's uh, Charlie's uncle, the lawyer. Uh, I don't think I got that far into it. Oh, there's this great episode where he like uh, he's like pro- he's like in court. They're fighting about something in court, and he's like wearing these giant fake rubber hands. Oh, uh. he's, <laughs> he's just like, wouldn't you want to have a lawyer like me with large hands or whatever? It's so <laughs> weird, but it's so funny. But uh, I don't care how the the console looks as long as it plays well. Yeah, that's how I feel overall. Because like to be honest, that and the Xbox Series X both are kind of whatever looking. Okay, the Xbox Series X, okay, at least the PlayStation 5, I'm like, all right, yeah, fine, whatever, it looks all right. The the Xbox Series X, I know it's called the Xbox, but this is literally a box. 
hey, it's just a box. Hey, man, I'm fine with that too. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, I wish. I mean, let, don't get me wrong. The PS4 Pro and the uh, the Xbox One X are great looking consoles. Yeah, they actually look very pretty, and they look better than the Switch. And the Switch ain't even that ugly. I think the Switch is pretty good. It's colorful. It's fun I, looking. I just it is, but when it when you dock it, it just looks a little awkward when it like sticks out the dock and like I don't know. Yeah, I do want to get a Switch. That's something I, I I really want to get a Switch. Oh yeah, they Nintendo's always done great stuff, and there's stuff speculated to come out that makes it even better. Yeah, but um. You know, the PS5 is supposed to be this really powerful thing and everyone keeps comparing them. And I'm like, I don't care. Most games are going to look pretty much the same on both. I'm probably going to buy both. And my thing is, I just hope that it ventilates better than the PS4 because the fan just gets really loud. And I've cleaned that thing multiple times and the fan is just really loud. So I just hope it's quieter compared to the Xbox. Nothing will ever compare to the Xbox 360, the original one. I oh, have yeah. the original that white one. That bad boy one. goes to town on the fan. <laughs> yeah, I, I had it on one time just to try to... I was trying to set up the the smart glass like I was telling you about. My dad had the TV on the back room. He's like, is that your Xbox? I was like, yeah. He's like, I hear it across <laughs> the house. Yeah, well, that one was always known to be very loud, of course. Oh, but it's ridiculous. Uh, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't more excited for the Xbox Series X. Now, I mean, I I figured because... Yeah, I have a soft spot. Yeah. And the funny thing is the PlayStation 1 was the first console I've ever owned. Really? Yeah. You know, it, you would think Nintendo or something, but no, it was the PS1. Nah, mine I was, had a nice library. <laughs> mine was the PlayStation 2, and I got it because my parents, like... Here's something funny. My parents, specifically my mom, worked at... Uh, worked in Silicon Valley during the tech boom, like the early mm. days of tech, like when Apple was first getting started and everything. And she used to make all the the motherboards and everything for the Atari games, and then later Nintendo. Ah, uh, so she worked there when Mike Judge worked there. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and uh, she met Steve Jobs once, uh, once or twice oh, nice. too, because they would all go to like bonfire parties and everything. Everybody hated Steve Jobs even back then, but. He was- he was a good spokesperson and knew how to really market stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she said, she goes, Oh, I thought he was an asshole, but, no. <laughs> uh, so she used to get to be able to, to test the video games and everything. And my dad, like, you know, the, worked in electronics and computers and all that. They were super against video games though. When I was a little kid. Oh, wow. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I was that kid. Like I could not play video games. Cause I was just like, you're it's gonna it's because my cousins who live down the street like his parents would let him play like mortal Kombat since he was like, oh there it two. is yeah yeah so it's just like no it's gonna make you violent it's bad it's this and that all video games are bad and they brought it they bought into the hype and everything and i think uh eventually like i i was able to play a few little games on on i i I I got to play the Spider Man game um, that was on the Dreamcast and the PS One yeah. I got to play that on the PC. So amazing game. And then uh, I finally saved up money and bought myself. A, I just went, we we're at the mall one day and I said, Hey mom, I'll be right back. I just went and bought a used PlayStation two. Hell yeah. Yeah. But it was like right when the PS three came out. So it was like immediately well, irrelevant, but I didn't to, care. To, to your luck, the PS three didn't have the best launch. So it didn't, but I was just like, I didn't care. I was like, I played, I think I picked up, Spider-Man 2 and SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom and a couple of Sly Cooper games. There you go. Those yeah. sold the library right there. Right. And then later on, I, I got like uh, True Crime Streets of LA and then GTA San Andreas. Nice. Yeah, those games are awesome. Oh, yeah. And I really love those. Like pretty much all those except for those. I never played the SpongeBob one. Yeah, I love like I love cart. I have a real soft spot for like cartoony platforming games. So like, well, yeah, they're always fun to play. Like, just kind of like turn your brain off and just enjoy. Yeah, just have some fun. Like, I'm I'm stoked for the new SpongeBob re Battle for Bikini Bottom rehydrated. Yeah, that well, looks fun. The game was popular, so of course it's getting remade. Oh yeah, that's a lot of fun. I love Banjo Kazooie. Sly the Sly Cooper games. I love the Sly games. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, well. You can get all that on Nintendo, basically. Just that style Pretty of game. Much. Pretty much. And then now that I've discovered emulation, I'm just like, oh, God, I can play these games at, like, 
I can play these games in like uh, 4K now. I know, right? <laughs> I know they look so good. I was like, Jesus, the crap! People, people put the work in. Oh yeah, they look so good on the on the emulation things now, and I'm just like, God damn, they could, they didn't, they couldn't do that back then or something. Like I don't know, they look so grainy. Yeah, well, you know, technology got better over time, right? Right, right. Yeah. But uh, for the PS5, I'm still excited for it, and I still want it. Yeah. And it's just, I'm more excited for the Xbox Series X because I've been getting into digital games a little bit more and only buying physical for ones that are worth it for me. Yeah. But the one upper hand that Xbox is really like having over the PlayStation and the Switch is the backwards compatibility. compatibility. Yes, oh, definitely. Yeah, the fact that, because I bought, for instance, you know, I was telling you how I was replaying all the Resident Evil games, mm-hmm. and I bought them digitally. So now, when the new Xbox comes out, I don't even need to hold on to my Xbox One X. I just re-download everything on the Xbox Series X, and it could potentially run better and look better, because that's what they're going to do as well. Right, I'm so and, jealous. And it's just like I have a whole backlog, uh, or not backlog, but a whole library of Xbox 360 and Xbox One games that could all be played on the Series X. Now, to me, that is such a smart move and such a, like a, you know, they always said they want to respect the gamer's pocket, and that's so true. And this is what I'm saying, like, so, like Sony, Microsoft buying like WB Games, for instance, like it could just open up a whole new floodgate of like games for people and just. The accessibility, the like, the ease of access, and it's just like, it just it's like a no brainer in a way, you know. Right, and that's why I really I do want to build a gaming PC just so I could have that uh, that access to it and everything mm-hmm. you know, to the to the Microsoft games because I still do I still do like Xbox because that's why I went with you know like I said I had the 360 and everything. Yeah, and the PS5 is going to be backwards compatible with the PS4 games, but no one knows if anything before that, like I have PS3 games. I still want to play. Yeah. But I don't have a PS3 controller that works properly. And on top of that, I, you know, it's not, the PS3 isn't going to last forever. You know, the actual hardware. There are some games on the PlayStation three that are exclusives. I'm just like, I really love to play them, but they're, you know, they're not for sale on the, uh, on the, the PlayStation network to where you can download them for the PS4 and, I don't feel yeah, like exactly. buying a buying a three six or buying a PS three. Yeah, like you. I don't want to have to go out to buy a PS three. So, yeah. I hope they figure something out. And again, I'm not shaming the system. Besides the controller, I'm not a fan. But I like the controller. But okay, <laughs> I know you like the controller. But I'm just saying, <laughs> the Xbox One fits my hands better. Okay. But uh, yeah, it's just I'm gonna buy it and. I just really wish I got more of a bang for my buck. It's speculated to be pretty expensive. Yeah. And yeah. So I heard. I mean, starting that's no like, secret. Starting like around five hundred, and then the top tier is gonna be like six fifty. I heard. Yeah, some people are saying up to seven hundred, and I'm like, jeez. Oh, I know it's got technology PC doesn't even have access to yet, but let's be real. You could build a okay gaming PC or okay gaming rig for like nine hundred dollars. Right. That's my goal with the PC with when I build my own PC is that I want to be able to like change it out to like upgrade it as it goes. So so that way I don't have to keep buying consoles. Like if I could just switch out for more Ram or whatever, you know, that'd be great. That's literally what I did. I bought in the past five years, I've upgraded my Ram and my video card and it's held up just fine. Yeah, that's it. That's all I, that's all I want to be able to do. So I mean, we'll see, right? As we get closer to the release date, the games look dope on both. You know, yeah, I'm excited. Do. I'm excited for Halo. You know, I'm just gonna say Halo Six because that's what it basically is. Yeah, I'm excited for Halo Six, uh, Gears of War Six. Whenever that launches, you know, I know they're making one, and I'm gonna be ready for it. And same thing for the PlayStation. I cannot wait to play Horizon. I completed that game on PS4. Right. That looks so, like it just looks like such a dope game. Yeah, and the Miles Morales game and the sequel to the Spider Man PS4 game. Because I think the Miles Morales is kinda like the one point five game. Yeah, I was thinking it's gonna be kinda like the way we had a there was Assassin's Creed two and then there was like Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and then yeah, Revelations exactly. and then there was three. So that's fine. I'm I'm okay with that. Yeah, I like no, it's still like gonna Miles be a solid Morales. game. And 
it seemed a little soon, you know, to like release a sequel. Yeah, because a sequel is supposed to have like there's rumors it's going to have like Venom and Carnage in it. Yeah, so it's going to take some time, and which I'm okay with Miles Morales holding me up. And if it's like a PS5 launch title, that honestly would be enough for me to like want to pick it up immediately. Yeah, and you know, so. I I am happy too that like uh, I. Because I was about to get a PS4, but then I was just like, if the five's going to be out in December, I might as well just wait for the five and actually be up to date on yeah. consoles for once. So that way I could actually play with all my friends and everything. Exactly. So, yeah. and if it's going to be backwards compatible with the, they PS4. said like, yeah, ninety percent of the PS4 library, like that's fine with me. Yeah, you, you got plenty of games you can play. There's plenty of PlayStation Four games that are phenomenal and awesome, yeah. and just as good as games you can find anywhere else. So. Right. I think in terms, if your wallet can keep up, and if you got the free time, gaming is going to look really good in the next year. Yeah, I'm excited about that too. Especially since, like, pretty much now all jobs are like might be work from home almost permanently now, if it's possible. Yeah, except for me, because I'm at Trader Joe's. But you except know. for you, yeah. Well, yeah, I just got to Skype in on the uh, or Zoom call in at the register. <laughs> <laughs> hey, with the way. Uh, Elon, I know that Elon Musk and all of them have predicted that most jobs are going to be automated in the next like 30 years or something. So it's like, yay. Oh boy, I can't wait. But yeah. We're headed for Blade Runner. Like I thought that we, I was always hoping we'd be heading for Star Trek. We're headed for Blade Runner. This is <laughs> no, we're not heading for Blade Runner. We're headed for the Blade Runner ripoff <laughs> you find uh, in like B-movie sections. of Not even uh, a good stories. Blade Runner movie, the shitty one. Yeah, like the really bad ripoff. Oh, great. Judge well, Dread. <laughs> yeah, pretty much the Stallone Dread. <laughs> yeah, the Stallone Judge Dread. <laughs> but until <laughs> then, <laughs> until then, gaming's looking pretty solid. And oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. And the Switch, that's a no brainer. I mean, Breath of the Wild 2, Smash Bros. is getting new characters. On top of that, there's a speculation they're remastering all the 3D Mario platforms on Switch. So that's cool. You I, know, I, I still want to Switch, I want to get one soon. Yeah, and if you're going to not be disappointed, and if they really do remake all those Mario games, dude, that means Mario 64, Sunshine, Galaxy 1 and 2, and 3D World all remastered for the Switch. I'm in. That's Those games are all amazing. So, Do you want to know something? Huh? I have never played a Mario game before. Well, if you get a Except, Switch, you can play them all. <laughs> yeah. The only one I've ever played, I played Mario Kart a couple times with uh, some friends when I was living in San Francisco. Oh, uh, see, I'm a, I'm a hardcore Nintendo fanboy. I have no problem saying that. I was, a, I was a Crash Bandicoot kid. Oh, okay. Well, I was a Spyro kid, surprisingly. Spyro? I, you know, Spyro is one of those ones I missed out on. I saw somebody playing the remastered the other day on, uh, on Twitch, and I was like, you know what? I want to I check those games out. Yeah, it's like a Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah. yeah. I, lo- I love those games. Oh, yeah, they're awesome. I have the remaster, and I love it. Yeah. I'm, but, I'm uh, glad that all those... those I'm, I, I'm glad platformers are one of those things that have just kind of stayed strong. Oh, those cartoony dude. platformers. Platformers are always going to be fun. Yeah, you know, as long as the level design and the, it's a proper challenge, you can make a great platforming game. Right. I replayed. So. Uh, I played uh, Fable Anniversary uh, a couple months ago, and that was really fun. I played Fable Two, and that's it. I can't say I've really, you know, I never really played Fable as much as an Xbox fanboy I was growing up. Yeah, uh, play play the first one. You might like it. Fable Anniversary. If you can download it on the Xbox 360 or something, you you might like it. Well, it is backwards compatible with the uh, Xbox Series X. So you know, I've had it with you flexing with this backwards compatibility <laughs> thing. Like I get my, it. Uh, my my youthful <laughs> days. No, nah, I'm just I'm just trolling. My youthful days of being an Xbox fanboy are, are coming back to me. Yeah. But like, you know, I, I love all gaming. I love all consoles. I love PC. I'm not a hater. You know, right? I, I want to get love in, everybody. I really want to get into gaming. But, get back into gaming again because it's just it's something i really missed out on with the whole ps4 era and everything and speaking yeah, of gaming since with my background did you play the new predator hunting ground games i wanted to i watched them before you buy from a uh, from game ranks and it looked pretty cool it's just i don't have friends like you need like a good five six friends to make it fun right and i don't have like a group of friends i do have a group of friends that play games but we're not all sitting here like let's all buy the predator game guys right and that's uh i was uh wa- i watched angry joe's review of it and everything and he was saying that it was just like it, it, it's fun sometimes the consensus i got from all the critics i watched were just like it's fun 
when you have the group of friends and everything, but overall it's just, it's either you're way, it's way too easy to kill the predator. Or if you're playing as a predator, you feel way too overpowered. Yeah. There's some balancing issues and yeah. that happens with multiplayer games. You yeah, gotta and then it's the just really issues. repetitive. Did there was yeah, well, a, there was a new Terminator game that got released too recently. That was supposed to be really, really fun. Oh, I had no idea. It just seems like Arnold was in every video game now. Yeah, no, it's supposed to be, you you play as a soldier in the future and everything. It's supposed to be really fun. There's been Terminator games that have been really fun, but I've only played like one, I think. Oh, wow. Apparently, Terminator Resistance. I had no idea this came out. Yeah, it was, do you remember that shitty uh, on-rail shooter Rambo, Rambo game that came out? Yeah. It was made by the same people who made that, and they like really redeemed themselves, I heard. Wow. Apparently it's it's got some solid like it's got a range of reviews that make it worth like playing. It's probably one of those games you'd buy on sale or like rent, you know. Yeah, just like I, a you nice even weekend rent games these days, but yeah, a weekend thing. Yeah. Do you remember going to Blockbuster for the weekend rental? Dude, I went to Blockbuster to rent Superman 64 and let's just say ooh. Yeah. Ooh. And I also went to Blockbuster to play Pokemon Snap. So yes, I I remember the good old days of renting from stores. I am uh, older than you, Danny. <laughs> yes, I know. How old are you again? Uh, twenty-eight. Okay, you're okay. We're not, you're not that far mm. far beyond me. I'm twenty-five. Yeah, but no, those times I remember those times, and yes, I remember being greatly disappointed renting a game for the weekend. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, there is one last blockbuster that's still open in Oregon. Oh yeah, it's over in. Um, why do I want to say? Uh, where is it? Uh, not Reading. What is it? It's a really random town, and it's supported because it's the last blockbuster. So people go there. I was gonna make a road trip, and yeah, I've been planning on. Canceled. I've been planning on making a road trip to that for a while now, but it's just like always something comes up. But like, I've been really wanting to go visit it. Hey man, episode on the road. You never know, dude. I'm down. I am so yeah. down. I've been down to do that for a long time. <laughs> We're gonna have to plan it out. Yeah, but yeah, I think overall. Game news has been blown up because it's almost the holiday season, so it happens. Yeah. But uh, I think to kind of put a nice bow on the topic, I'd say I'm pretty excited across the board. Yep, me too. You know, in terms of from PC, Switch, Xbox One X or Series X and PS5, I'm pretty excited to like save up and really like throw down. And it's going to be a good time. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm happy that uh, I just need to, I need to get a good TV too. Yeah, that's another hard part. And now they're all saying 8K, 120 hertz. It's like, okay, let me go just casually buy this like $4,000 TV for this. I am perfectly okay with just a 1080p, 1920 <laughs> TV. You'll get an experience. It's all, at the end of the day, it's all about the gameplay. Yeah, I just want to get the, I want to get, I saw the, those curved TVs. You know, those ones that kind of have the curved screen. Yeah, that, I remember but, when they first came out, I wasn't too fond of them, but. Yeah, I've seen some ones that look really good that were like, on sale for a decent price. I was like, eh, maybe I might try it out just to see how it is. You never know. Just got to do your research to find the TV that fits for you. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So I think that's everything for, I think we pretty much covered all the, the video game stuff and video game stuff was the main one I wanted to talk about. Yeah. And then we have, ah, uh, yes, the collectible geeks new NECA just dropped this the other day, which is, their new King Kong figure and it looks so good. Yeah, I I'm not big on the I guess non comic book figure world. I guess you would say. Is that the uh, way to put it? This uh the kaiju cut like kaiju stuff and everything is not your thing? No, because you know I like statues, but of course I collect like comic book statues. Yeah. Yeah. So this is definitely got some great statues. Yeah, I know this is definitely more your uh, your realm. It is, and it's just it costs me so much money, but I love it. But yeah, like <laughs> I love the way that this King Kong figure actually like has like it looks like the nineteen thirty three King Kong, mm-hmm, like the actual rubber suit in a way. Yeah, it looks so good, and it's just the only thing that sucks though is that it's like eight inches tall, and like most of their NECA's Godzilla figures and everything, and like the S H Monster figures drop in between like seven and eight, six and seven inches. So he's gonna be a little bit bigger. So I, I well, it's weird though because isn't isn't Godzilla taller than King Kong? Yeah, technically, like Godzilla would be like 
like up to here. So I'm like close to 10 inches. Yeah. So, so it's going to look awkward basically. <laughs> it is. So I might have to like crouch him down or something like, or he'll just be in his own separate display, but either way I, I'm going to get it or, and I doubt that that'll be the Neko will probably release another figure that's more in scale. Yeah, more than likely. I mean, these things constantly always get re-released and oh, yeah. different models come out. Yeah. You know, when it comes to these kaiju figures, I went to, you know, I went to San Diego Comic-Con last year and let me just say the line to get into the Godzilla like exhibit or store, whatever you want to call it, is crazy. Yeah, they're hardcore. Dude, my friend went out there like seven in the morning and he still couldn't get one. Really? Yeah. I was like, where did these Godzilla fans come from? I've, <laughs> I know I've, they're out there, but I was like, Jesus Christ, man. Godzilla is one of those things. It's just, you'd be surprised. People, there's some people who are just hardcore fans that you would never expect. Well, I mean, you're a hardcore, like, monster, uh, monster flick fan, right? Oh, yeah. Like a Godzilla, King Kong, like the, I love those 50s B movies, the Harryhausen movies. Like, yeah. I know that's definitely your realm. Oh, yeah. Like, I am just huge into Godzilla and all that. But, yeah. Apparently, half a Comic Con as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, at least it's distracting them from everything else. Yeah. I know, right? Yeah, I uh, one of the guys I work with at the at the current place that I'm interning for. They uh, he's a marketing director, and he had like a got couple Godzilla statues and a big ass Godzilla poster at his desk and everything. And, and he's like this older white guy in his like he looks like he's in his fifties or whatever. And you'd never suspect it because he's like this real professional guy and everything. But he's just like, oh yeah, I live and breathe Godzilla because I go buy the action figures and everything. They're out there, man. I mean, the movie franchise exists for like 50 years, 60 years at this point for a reason. Oh, yeah. One of the longest running movie franchises. Yeah. So, and then speaking of Godzilla, there there's is. here's a picture of another Godzilla figure that's coming out. It's the, this is like an alternate version that just got released the other day and it's supposed to be from Godzilla versus Biollante. And this is like my favorite Godzilla design from the Heisei era, the 1989 suit. Mm-hmm just it looks so corny <laughs> there's a there's a certain like oh i like that one yeah that's a that's a 2003 millennium one that's supposed to be coming out this figure looks okay it's it's i'm not a huge fan of it but it it looks all right well, where's my matthew broderick godzilla figurine oh okay. don't tell me you, you like that movie <laughs> jameer Koy is on the soundtrack you gotta like it for a reason. <laughs> Actually, I don't think that the 1998 Godzilla movie is even bad. It's a you know, it's a fun movie. Yeah, it's a fun monster flick. I'm just like, if it was, it's just that it's called Godzilla. But if it were anything else, I'd actually pr- probably like it more. Yeah, the CG is pretty bad, and it's yeah. funny to realize Hank Azaria is in it. Oh yeah, like Hank Azaria, Nancy Cartwright. There's like a bunch of Simpsons people in it. Yeah. And like, and then you got Matthew Broderick as like the main character. I was like, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> if they just would, uh, like I, there was a Godzilla IDW was doing their Godzilla comics for a while. And oh, yeah, they, those were awesome. Apparently I never read are, them, but the reviews are pretty good. And they oh, they're certain. so fun. And, uh, there was one episode, there was one issue where the 1998 Godzilla shows up in Honolulu and the <laughs> real Godzilla from Japan shows up and they fight. And it's such a good comic. Uh, I'll have to check it out. It's going to be in the backlog. Yeah. Check it out. I heard IDW like just let their, cause Toho is really stingy with the rights to Godzilla, but mm-hmm. and IDW just let their right, their contract expire with them. Unfortunately. Uh, well, that's how it is sometimes when it comes to like famous properties, you just kind of, a lot of like ins and outs of the deals have to go through that we don't know about to make it happen. Yeah, it's true. And then, Mezco just dropped oh, this. Oh yeah, year, that right? looks pretty awesome. That looks so good. Apparently, like the the base lights up and everything. Oh, dude, when you were showing me this earlier, it got me realizing I wasn't the biggest fan of the Christopher Reeve Superman movies, but I thought his design and him as Superman was awesome. It's just because they kept it simple. Yeah, you know, he just has to save the day. <laughs> yeah, it's a simple thing. The the suits just straightforward and everything like. And plus, Christopher Reeve just like he just oozes Superman. Yeah, I agree. Christopher Reeve is definitely like I am very big on saying I'm not a Michael Keaton Batman fan. You son of a bitch. Yeah, you know what? I went there. 
But I'm, <laughs> let's be honest. It's not like, you know, he was better than like Val Kilmer or George Clooney. But I'm going to be honest. Like, I still stand by my Ben Affleck is my best Batman. Yeah, to me, it's always, it's Michael Keaton, then Kevin Conroy, and then it's, uh, and then it's Ben Affleck. Yeah. Because I, I, I think that all three of them really, I think Kevin Conroy, because he has, he had the advantage of doing a lot of animated movies and everything that are a lot more accurate. Yeah. I think he has the, the advantage over all of them, though. It's that voice, too. That's like the voice. I know. And, and then, then, well, I was going to say, I was going to say Christian Bale when he's not talking as Batman. <laughs> Yeah, Christian Bale does. I never. I always thought Christian Bale was like the weakest part of the Dark Knight trilogy. He was cool as Bruce Wayne, and then occasionally as Batman, he held up. But there's other occasions I was like, eh. That's something I did. I love about Michael Keaton. You would never suspect him being Batman when you meet him. Yeah, I can see that. But those movies are a whole different story. Yeah, the first bat. If they made the original script, do you have ever read the original script of Batman Returns? No, because that movie's not good. <laughs> you don't like Batman Returns? I don't. And, you know, people yeah. think I'm crazy as, like, a hardcore Batman fan, but I really don't like that movie. Some people, either they love it or they hate it, and I, I've always kind of gone back and forth. I, I, I don't like Danny DeVito as a penguin. No, I don't like yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. Really? Yeah. I love Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. I, you know, I don't think we've had a really decent live-action Catwoman. Really, I I think Anne Hath Anne Hathaway was she was okay. Yeah, she was cool. She just didn't really look like Catwoman. It was yeah, like, she. I didn't I didn't look at her and say like that's Catwoman, but like I thought Michelle Pfeiffer. I think Michelle Pfeiffer is really good. Daniel DeVito could have been a great Penguin if they more went the route of like like they didn't. The Arkham City to me has the best Penguin. The Ark the Arkham games are some of the best depiction of Batman lore in general. Right, and that's why I, I oh. always tell Batman fan or uh, Snyder fanboys who who are just like, oh no, Zack Snyder got Batman one hundred percent right. There is a moment in Batman Arkham Asylum. Remember where there's like the the thug who's like hanging from the the chain, and there's like the poison gas on the bottom, and you got to go save him. Yeah, like Bat or like Batman throws a batter and cuts the chain and lets the guy drop to break the ceiling so he can like. And so he can hit the the switch to clear out the gas with the battering. But you hear Batman say, "I can't let that man die. I have to cl- I have to clear the room out as as fast as possible." Yeah. So like that's that's ah uh, I I there is no excuse for Ben Affleck or Michael Keaton's Batman just offing people left and right. I yeah again that's a whole other subject. But let's just say when he's fighting people, I love Ben Affleck's Batman. Even when he's oh, talking. Yeah. When ben Affleck, ben, they finally got the Batman voice right in a live action movie to me. Yeah, Ben Affleck with Ben Affleck, and then when he is being a calm Batman who's not fighting or doing detective work or just being Bruce Wayne, Kevin Conroy, and that's what I leave it at. Yeah, I, I we but, didn't really get to see. Oh yeah, we did get to see Michael Keaton do some detective work, not as much yeah, as I would like. They don't really know. put it in the movies. Yeah. Christian Bale, I thought they that was they had great detective work for Batman in those movies. I thought there was this whole thing that he didn't do much detective work. Well, at least in The Dark Knight. Oh, well, yeah, he did a little bit. But, yeah, I, yeah. I, you wanted more of it. That's how I felt about it. Right. And I think that's where the Robert Pattinson movie, I'm, I'm really excited for that. And, you know, I, you know I'm going to watch it, and I'm probably going to buy it. So <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, it's supposed to be based off of the – it's supposed to be a film noir movie that's based off of The Long Halloween. And if they could do that, that's perfect. I'm fine with that. That's what yeah. I need. Like if it, and if they're doing a young Batman, so if it's like Batman where he's still an urban legend and people don't believe that he exists and Harvey Dent isn't Two Face yet, perfect. There's a lot you could do with it. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot you could do with like all that noir esque shadow work. Right, and you know I'd love to if they if they tweak the suit, I'd love to see him next to Henry Cavill as Superman. Oh yeah, it'd be pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, it's always cool seeing them together, right? Oh yeah, and there are there's. But there's rumors, though, that they're trying to get Ben Affleck back as Batman and do the whole thing over again. And as much as I loved him as Batman, I just feel like that ship has sailed. It's just, I don't know, dude. Like, they, uh, that extended universe is a mess. Nobody knows what they want. We'll just have to see what happens. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, this figure I think looks really good. And like, I, I'm happy that we're finally getting a wired cape and everything. It's just, I've been waiting for a smiling Superman figure and this just. (laughs) 
Well, the thing is, I was getting that earlier was that Christopher Reeve just like he made the look for the on-screen Superman. Oh, I know that like the smile, everything. Henry Cavill to me has the potential to be a really, really good Superman. Oh yeah, he's a great Superman. It's just yeah. they got to write him differently. Yeah, just give him a good writer and a good director and a better suit, and he could be great. Yeah, he's got it all. He's got the build. He's got the. He's got the swag for Superman, basically. Yeah, he's got the smile and everything. And, like, the, the, I know what people hate on Justice League. I love the Justice League Superman suit because it's finally bright and it, it pops with the colors. Yeah. You need the, you need, you don't have to do the tidy whitey or the, the red tights or whatever, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah. The, anyways, the Speedo, whatever the you got. The hard. Yeah. Basically, you could have that. You could, you don't have to have that. You can't have it. Just make the suit work. You know, and yeah, we'll we'll see though. But either way, he can make it work as long as they do it properly. For sure, yeah. I uh, I, I hope he gets another chance at Superman with with some good writers and everything. He will. People don't want nobody wants anybody to change. They all want Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman and um, what's his name as Aquaman. It's uh, it's just the writers everybody wants. Yeah, the change. actors and actresses are just fine. Everyone's yeah. decent at what they do. Uh, Jason Momoa, I couldn't remember his name, but him as Aquaman is just fine. Even the guy Urza Miller. Oh yeah, he's so strange. He's strange, but you know what? If you give him a chance, let him get a Flash movie, and it'll probably work. You know, like, right? I think he probably make it fine. Work. Yeah, yeah. I even think Jared Leto could have, even though he's like a weird cult leader. I think he could have been a great Joker. Yeah, they just didn't have to go the weird edgy route. But yeah, you know, people have been saying that for like years at this point. Just. Get a new team to make those movies. Keep your actors and actresses and just see what happens. But according to Snyder fanboys, we just don't like the DC movies because they're they're written above our level. See, we're just oh. too stupid. And that's why we have to go watch Marvel. Sorry, I got my big, I got a little brain energy when watching those movies. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I feel like those <laughs> movies literally did make me dumber. Especially like trying to figure out Lex Luthor's evil plan and to Batman v Superman. Yeah, I was like, this is so stupid. Like, oh, it just didn't make any sense. Yeah, it's just kind of, we're going to go down the rabbit hole, but. I know. Anyways, this is a beautiful action figure that looks <laughs> just like the perfect Superman that Henry Cavill can be. Except for that face. They, they really yeah, that, to, that's why it was a little awkward. The one, the, the stern, the, the stare. Yeah, this that is, one. This looks perfect. Yeah, that, grit. You know, if you're into Superman action figures, that's it. That's the yes. one. I, I have the original Mezco Superman, which is. I got it for a steal, but I, I think I'm gonna have. I'm probably gonna sell it so I can get this, and then let me look it up here. There is the Mafex Superman. Yeah, this guy right here. Oh yeah, this one looks just really good. But yeah, yeah, that does look pretty cool. But ever, collectibles are so expensive nowadays. Yeah, for pieces of plastic and like porcelain, especially stuff from Japan. Yeah, the importing stuff, like importing stuff, is rough too. Yeah, J the Japan makes the best collectibles though. Yeah, their lines, like the ones that are like made by like Japanese artists and everything, are pretty awesome. Right. Yeah. Yeah, their actual like their take on the characters and like the original designs they do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think if there, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Uh, me ranting about the new video games was my big one, and paying my respects to Danny O'Neill. Those are, you know, that's what I wanted to get off my chest and talk about, and just you know say that again. You know, like the the people creating all our pop culture, they're people too. Yes, yes, they are. Yeah. We for, we forget about that very, very quickly. Yeah, and you know, it's just it's crazy because we live in a generation where those people are now starting to die off. Yeah, and it's like we were saying uh, during our uh, our comics episode is that these people like you know like Denny O'Neill, George Perez, all these guys they're not going to be around forever and we really need to learn as much as we can from them, you know, mm -hmm. about what they did that made comics so great. Yeah, so 
Who knows? Maybe DC can even learn from them with the, with all the stuff they got going on. I I have a big feeling that if AT and T is willing to sell off Warner Brothers Interactive, then they would probably love to sell off DC and just let it go die. Yeah, I think like I was telling you earlier, I feel like they want to profit more off of DC and they can't. Yeah. So I feel like they're going to make that mistake of selling different parts of the DC property to different people. And, you know, someone has the rights to the video games. Someone has the rights to the publishing. You know, this is all speculative, of course. Yeah. Someone has rights to the cinema stuff and it could be a mess. And when, you know, we're still dealing with the repercussions with Marvel, you know, Hulk is still under universal and, Spider-Man is still under Sony and right. I was, I was just about to say that like that's, they could really end up shooting themselves in the foot if they, if they do that, because that's why that's one of the problems with the MCU. They, they, they were missing big chunks of that universe when they first started because they, they sold off all their movie characters. Yeah. All of like X-Men and fantastic four was at Fox. And yeah. That's like- a, that's a huge part of the Marvel universe. Yeah, I mean, oh. X-Men is probably the most popular series for them, realistically, on the comic side. Yeah. So, hopefully DC doesn't make that mistake. And they might be, or at and I should say, they might be headed that route. So, we'll see, right? Yeah, you gotta, hey, they're bringing, they're, at and is the ones who are bringing back, the, who are bringing out the Snyder Cut, so. Oh boy, an extra 30 mil oh, exclusively God. on HBO Max. Yeah. Oh, speaking of HBO Max, that's one thing I wanted to I want to talk about real quick. This is just me because I'm a I'm a cinema guy and everything. I love movies, and I heard that HBO Max recently pulled off Gone with the Wind. Oh yeah, I remember you telling me that. Do you know why? Because of the way you have you seen Gone with the Wind? I've seen clips, but I've never seen the movie all the way through. So it's pretty much about the the South, like after so the Civil War. Uh-huh. And them trying it's during like the reconstruction thing and everything and they uh it's it's a touchy I know it's a touchy subject and everything but like there there's a lot of characters who are slaves and everything who just kind of stick around on the plantation to, and they're all just kind of trying to help each other out and everything and rebuild and all that and there's like some really great characters and everything and actually what that was really significant about that movie and let me bring it up so I make sure I I get her name right is that um Hold on here. Hey, Hattie McDaniel, or yeah, Hattie McDaniel was a uh, was an actress in it, and she was the first African American actress to uh, win an Oscar for that movie. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, she played a character. I think her name was Mammy in the mm-hmm. in the movie, and but because of you know, I don't know why HBO thought that, that would be a good idea, but yeah, they pulled the movie down. Because of the its depiction of people and everything, and oh, I see. Well, I yeah. know they've had some pretty dicey stuff on there before, and they had they had like a disclaimer, like saying this is a product of the time and all that. Right, Disney's had to do that too with with a lot of their stuff. But Turner Classic Movies does that all the time with their movies because they present them in the way it was, and yeah, you know. Well, it's I like, mean, it's hard to say. You know, we're not a big corporation. Like, what the right move is? Yeah, I, I understand that, but it's yeah. just I think that. You know, it's a representation of what the time of what the times were like, and history is not pretty. And I think censoring history is a a huge detriment to you know kids now. And I think that that's a huge slap in the face to 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 Hattie McDaniel's uh, achievement by winning winning her the, the yeah, Oscar. Yeah, I mean, for that. if she won an Oscar, she won it for a reason, you know. Right, and, and I don't know. It's like a big moment in history to you know for something for. For that film to be taken off, I could see why it would, it's kind of weird to do that because, you know, it's she, you said she was the first African-American to win an Oscar. Yeah. Yeah. You know, some people might want to watch it because of that. Right. And but, you know, because it's it depicts characters as being racist, but it's like it's a Civil War era. That's just the way things were back then. And I think that. I don't know. Censoring history to me is like not a, a, a way of well, fixing things the way the problems with our, we're having now. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, people learn from history and learn to do, you know, to not say, make the same mistakes. Right. Exactly. Or at least you would hope so. so 
I don't know. It's one of those touchy subjects that's like, yeah, you don't want to censor it because you want people to see what was wrong and how we could learn, how like people can learn and do better than that. Exactly. You know, it's like, it's like the video game LA Noir. Like that game made me so uncomfortable with how racist they were towards, towards people back then and everything. But, and they were very blatant about it with the way that, or they were very, it was very realistic by the way that they portrayed it and everything in that game, but it's good that it makes you uncomfortable and it's good that it shows, you know, how yeah. far that we've come and everything. That's what I, I love about history when in film and things like that. Yeah, I can see that. So like I said, I didn't know any of that. So, I mean, who knows why they did it? It's probably obvious, you know, as with everything going on. Yeah. But you know, it's 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 such a it's one of those subjects that's hard to approach because you know like you want to say like don't do that because you want to i don't know what i'm trying to say here but basically just learn from the past yeah yeah it's that's true and i i don't know it's uh i know it's complicated but i think that there's i think that that is just a in my opinion it's just a very backwards way of, of going about things yeah, I mean, you know. Yeah, what are you going to do? What do you get, if you're the person who's ready to pull that plug, you know, is like we don't know what, what's, you know, the, how should I say, like what the losses and gain could be from doing that, you know? True. So. Yeah, it's a, uh, I don't know. But yeah, it's just something I wanted to bring up because I know that that's like a, that movie's one of the, the great movies and, uh, I think it's, it was worth mentioning with, uh, with all the stuff happening right now. Yeah. Well, for all I know, maybe it can come back or maybe they'll make it available on multiple platforms just so, cause you know, a lot of people are doing that with a lot of films that are supposed to help and spread awareness of certain topics. True. Yeah. So who knows? So, I hope so. Yeah. But anyways, I think we'll wrap it up there guys. Uh, if there's anything, you got nothing else, Brandon. I think I'm good. You know, okay. I think, uh, like I said, I got to rant about my video games. So I think we're, uh, <laughs> all right. I, I think that's good then. So we'll wrap it up right here, guys. Uh, we'll be back next week with, uh, some more videos and, uh, we'll see you guys later. Take care. All right. Thank you, everybody.